All the answers are gonna be either MacGyver or Mr. T. My boobies really are not that big. That sounds dirty. Oh, Captain, my Captain. I'm keeping score because I don't trust Jason. <laughs> what the hell am I doing in this show? <laughs> wow. <laughs> May the force be with you, Internet. I'm Jason Hawk, host of Atomic Trivia War 9000, Manny the Comlink from here in our Ohio HQ. Let's meet our contestants. Some say he's from Hoth, but we just call it Canada. From the icy heart of Ontario, he is Kevin Archibald. Oh, chef, and may the force be with you. And his people live in the rainforest, stand about three feet tall, and speak an unintelligible dialect. He's our Latin American friend, Omar Hernandez. Wasn't that one of the Asian languages, actually? Uh. It was like Tibetan or something like that. <laughs> if you thought Tauntaun smelled bad on the outside, wait until you get a whiff of her. Oh. <laughs> From Seattle, Washington, she is Romance Anona. Oh, God, I feel like one of those Tauntauns that got their body ripped open and the intestines <laughs> are coming out right now. Oh, poor Rose, she's sick tonight. I, I am. Oh. And uh, he could tell you that the hollow chess game on the Millennium Falcon is actually called Dejeric. He's the board game blogger for MTV.com, and he's our buddy, Matt Morgan. Hello. Now, if you haven't caught on tonight, we're celebrating Star Wars Classic, which is to say the good stuff before George Lucas went and peed in our uh, blue milk. <laughs> so, we've got some great questions for you tonight. After all, it's all going to be Star Wars, 100% Star Wars, here on Atomic Trivia War 9000. Nerd. <laughs> uh, better known as Omar's specialty category. Yeah, I hear that Omar's really into Star Wars, isn't that right? Yes. I thought That's that was Star Trek. Star Trek. Oh, oh, damn it. Okay. Uh, let's get right into the questions here, because we've got a lot of them to tackle. They're from lots of different submitters from tonight as well. Uh, Cameron Smith from New Hampshire, Rick Tetro in Florida, Clayton Polisi, Greg Blanchard, he's from Ohio, just like me. Yoo-hoo. We've got Chris Mitchell from Englandshire, Peter Gilliam from somewhere over there near Rowe. Boo! <laughs> Don Thompson, Scott Rubin, Noel Johnson of Staffordshire, England. And as is usually the case, I couldn't re- resist writing a few of my own. Oh, I really hope I don't get Scott Rubin's okay. questions. I was told to be happy about this and to cheer for you guys. You guys suck. <laughs> Aww. And Wait a bit. God damn if I get Scott's questions, because those are fucking hard always. <laughs> if you want to be a submitter and er, and just be you know completely shat on by Omar, you can do that. I mean, you can email ATW9K at simplysyndicated.com. Uh, I need, for next week, let's see, uh, questions that you might have learned in school by 8th grade. Because we're going to do a show all about those. Wait. So send those over here to us. It can be math. It can be science. Uh, just don't make us actually crunch any numbers. Sweet. So you're going to make us, like, it's kind of like the Are You Smarter Than a 5th Grader sort of podcast episode next week? Is that what's Right. Gonna... Right. It is information that should have been accessible to all grade schoolers before they went off to high school. Great. <laughs> you know Scott is going to be like, I was studying like advanced physics at, at sixth grade, <laughs> so so you should you should know that. But science, math terms and concepts, social studies, literature, all that good stuff that you picked up through eighth grade. We have a spelling uh, bee round. <laughs> we might. Hey, that's not a bad idea. I don't know about these bounty submitters, man. We don't need their scum. <laughs> Someone's in the spirit. <laughs> but because we had such a big response from our fans about Star Wars questions. I've been able to double the number of questions tonight from 15 to 30. Ooh. What? That's impossible, even for let me get Let me get in the spirit as well. No! <laughs> <laughs> so get your targeting computers ready and prepare to bullseye some Womp Rats. It's time to play the lightning round. And uh, we forgot to actually draw straws before the round, so you guys decide what order you're going to go in. Have go our guests go first. Okay. Oh, then you can do the Mork, the Mork way. So Matt, Omar, Rochelle, and Kevin. Mork. Think Mork, like Mork and Mindy. Awesome. Okay, Matt, Omar, Rochelle, Kevin. Very good. Mm-hmm. So, Matt, you get tossed. Question number one. Are you ready? I am ready. Excellent. What was Luke Skywalker's last name in original drafts of the Star Wars Episode Four script? Was that Starkiller? It was Starkiller. Matt's already beating the pants off of everybody with one point. <laughs> Amazing. Number two goes to Omar. Who is the only non-Force-using character in Star Wars to wield a lightsaber on screen? Oh. Hmm. I'm thinking... Oh, yeah. So I'm going to say Han Solo. You guessed correctly. Yes. He uses it to split open the Tauntaun on Hoth. Ah, Stuffs Luke inside. Keep him warm. 
Number three goes to Ro. Mm -hmm. Ro, in a running gag, what two members of Red Squadron are recurring characters in the Final Fantasy franchise? Biggs and Wedge. Yes, good job. Oh, I totally... Really? Wow. Yeah, they're, they're the pilots of the mechs on Final Fantasy VI on the beginning. And in Final Fantasy VII at the beginning, they uh, help... They're, they're, they're two terrorists that help blow up yeah. the reactor. I totally guessed that, because I never played any of those Final Fantasies. Mm -hmm. Number nice four goes over to Kevin. Kevin, yes. this question is tailor-made for you and your tastes. You always say that when I'm about to fail, so let me... Hold on. I'm going to switch off my targeting computer and just feel the force on this one. Go for it. Well, you're not going to fail, because we're going with a no-child-left-behind kind of theme here. Okay. So, <laughs> Major Bren Derlin in The Empire Strikes Back is better known as what character on a 1982 to 1993 NBC sitcom? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, that would be uh, Cliff Clavin. There you go, John Ratzenberger. Yes. Uh, you got it there, uh... Uh, you pulled that one off there. That is a very good. Uh, that, of all your of all your impressions and accents, I'm going to put that as uh, number one. I worked very hard on it. <laughs> uh, number five, we're back to uh, M Matt here. Matt, we're all tied up, one across the board, all four of you. So this is your chance to pull ahead. When threatened with the destruction of her home planet of Alderaan, Princess Leia tells Darth Vader and Grand Moff Tarkin that the hidden rebel base is on what planet? Oh, that's definitely Dantooine. Dantooine. Yeah, it is Dantooine. <laughs> yep. I hate it when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Number six goes to Omar. Omar, what was the name of George Lucas's dog who served as the inspiration for Chewbacca? Uh, I actually read that looking for the trivia today. Uh, I know it was uh, an Alaskan something. Um, you know what kind of Wookie. dog, but not the name? I'm going to say Wookie. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No? The correct uh, answer is, we named the dog Indiana. Uh, really? Indiana. I, I thought the name was like Chewing Tobacco or something like that, and that's where they got Chewbacca. <laughs> oh, that would have been clever. I definitely no. read that somewhere. Okay. Seven, we're up to row. Okay. Of the characters who mount the dais at the end of episode four, which was not given a medal by the Rebel Alliance? Uh, Chewy. Yeah, and I totally mispronounced dais. I was like, dais? I'm like, the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like thick. I get my merge fixed up. Yeah. Chewbacca is the correct one. He got gypped. Kevin. Hey, -o. Actor Tim Rose voiced Admiral Akbar and two other Return of the Jedi alien characters, both in Jabba's Palace. Name one or the other of them. Wow. Uh, Akbar. Akbar had like the. the it's a trap. Voice. Yeah. Jabba so, no Yeah, no, but if you're voicing it, it uh, could be Mr. The Twilight Guy. Um, and we're going to need to know their names too, right? I need their names, yes. Uh, Admiral Akbar and two other Return of the Jedi alien characters in Jabba's palace. I just need Who's... one of them. Oh, really? Uh, okay, how about... Okay, we're gonna go... We're gonna go at the opposite end of the octave spectrum with uh, the little... Uh, little dwarf guy. Is it Scalacious Scrum is his name? Salacious Crumb, the Croakian monkey lizard. Is one of them, yes. Good job. Yay! Wow, that's quite a range, because one's very deep voice and one's very high voice, so very good. And the other is Cy Snoodles, the, okay. the dancer in the Max Rebo band. Oh, like the singing part, okay. Right. right Which right, is right, cut right. out of the new versions. Boo. It's quite a nerd, Kev. Quite a nerd. Number nine, Matt, Luke, Leia, and Lando, the three L's, rescued Han Solo from Jabba's sail barge over what landmark? Oh, man. It's, it's, it's not just the Sarlacc. It's got a name. Well, the Sarlacc lives in the landmark. It is the Great Pit of Carcoon. You have a third point, sir. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Epic. <laughs> Face to all the rest of you. And you have Matt kids, is, uh, dude? Matt's giving you a spanking. Uh, just one. I'll stop there. <laughs> Omar, this is a good question for you. Okay. I'm hoping that you can pull this off. Because okay. I know that you love some of these movies. What actor of Alien, The Running Man, and Live and Let Die turned down the role of Lando Calrissian because he was afraid George Lucas would kill him off? Is it Arnold? What are the movies again? No, it's not. What actor of Alien, The Running Man, and Live and Let Die turned down the role of Lando Calrissian afraid George Lucas would kill off the black guy? I'll even give you that little... Uh, Extra bit of information. Who is in the same movie? Alien, well, The Running Man, and Live and Let Die. There's really only one major black guy in The Running Man. And there's really only one black guy in Alien. 
Yeah, yeah but I, I don't remember him. It's yeah. just like he like got killed by uh, what's his name in the Running Man. Hold on, like, I, I know this. Yeah, I remember I there was name. a black guy in Aliens Three. I don't remember the black dude from Alien One. Uh, it's a strange name. It is a bit. It's oh, like shit. It sounds like a Star Wars name. Isn't it like Kofar Jafet or something like that? Something like that. Something like that. I'm gonna say Coffee Jafet. <laughs> the answer is Yafet Kodo. Oh, okay, uh, I was somewhat uh, close. Yeah. I would have okay. never guessed it, honestly. He was actually a pretty famous uh, a character actor back in the, the 80s. But uh, famous in all three of those films, Live and Let Die, of course, being the James Bond one. Um, number 11, uh, he was the bad guy in the James Bond one. Who was he in The Running Man? He was the only black guy. <laughs> yeah, I <actually, laughs> remember the black guy. I remember the uh, the electricity guy. No, he was he was chainsaw sliced dude. by... Um, yeah, he was sliced he, by the chainsaw guy, and he ended up dying afterwards. Yeah, he was a runner. He yeah, wasn't he was one runner. of the... He, he got killed uh, by he was one of the runners. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number 11 goes over to Roe. The opening crawl of episode 4 was written by what director of Scarface, Mission Impossible, and The Untouchables? Snap. Come on, you're the movie person, Roe. I know, but right directors, I, I can't remember who did... The only one I could really think about is uh, Mission Impossible, but... Mission Impossible, Scarface, and The Untouchables. Uh, blah, 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 hold on, hold on. No, I did not know he did this. Um, Martin Scorsese. No, it's not Martin Scorsese. He didn't do Mission Impossible, did he? No, not at all. No, how about yeah, uh, uh, Al Pacino? Um, what's the, what's the, no, it's not that Oliver guy. I don't know. Okay, I think we're gonna have to call this one on yeah. row. Does anyone else have it? Uh, Brian De Palma. Brian De Palma is correct. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. That's the Chicago way. That's my second Sean Connery <laughs> impersonation of the night. And, and it's, they're equally bad. Uh, <laughs> I love that movie, though. Number 12, back over to Kev. What is the first sentence of the opening crawl of Star Wars A New Hope? It's either it, it is or it was a period. It is a period of civil war. There you go. You got it right on the head. Hey. Correct tenses and everything. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't it in a galaxy far away? Uh, that's not the crawl, though. That's like no, sort that's... of the prefix. Right. Uh. In order to be a crawl, it has to be moving. Oh, okay, okay. There you are. Uh, top of the batting order, back up to Matt here. Matt, you have Billy D. Williams. <laughs> Another Lando Calrissian question. Had a lengthy advertising spokesmanship for what low-rent malt liquor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Colt 45 always hit the spot. <laughs> Damn straight it did. <laughs> that was a little racist. Uh, number 14, <laughs> going to Omar... <laughs> <laughs> Jabba's major domo, Bib Fortuna, was a member of what species from the planet Ryloth? As was the slave girl Ula, who tried to murder Jabba. Oh, I should know this. I should know this. Me- God damn it! It was, it was mentioned earlier. <laughs> they both had those uh, those big uh, yeah. head tail thingies. Yeah, the tentacle like thing. Was she trying to kill Jabba? I thought she was just trying to escape. Well, she tries to put the the chain around him. I think. Right, and she gets uh, thrown into the rancor pit. I thought she was just trying to not get raped. Yeah, I thought she was trying not to get any of that Java tongue all up in her. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was that. Can't remember. I remember her name. I, I do remember Ula. Think about Ro's favorite movie, because it kind of sounded like it. <laughs> <laughs> Shut It's not my favorite movie. Twilight. It's a Twi'lek. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen, Ro, and then we're going to take a quick commercial break, but your question is... Name three of the bounty hunters Darth Vader enlists aboard his Star Destroyer to hunt down the Millennium Falcon in The Empire Strikes Back. Isn't Boba one of them? Boba Fett? Boba Fett is one. Nice. So I name all the three. others become more difficult. Yes. Um, bounty Hunter 2 and Bounty Hunter 3. I don't know their names. <laughs> I'll bet you I could do five or six. The six would be five. quite the feat, because there were not six there. Okay. <laughs> well, let's see how many you can get. Okay, we got IG-88. Yes. We got uh, Bosk. Yes, with we got, two S's. We got Dang- Dangar. Dangar. We got uh, Bausch. Was Bausch there? No. No, Bausch, Bausch was, was Princess second. Leia's alter eagle. Right, in, right, uh, right, right. Beginning right. of Return of the Jedi. Uh, oh, uh, who, who's the, the wasp guy? The um... There were actually kind of two wasp guys. The... Kind of. oh. Who have I said so far? IG-88, Boba Fett, Dengar, 
Bosk. Mm-hmm. One was um, a droid. IG-88 is a droid. Uh, two were droids then. Uh, the silver guy, like the. Do you know who it is? Zuckus and Forlom. Zuckus, yeah, Forlom, yeah. 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 Zuckus <laughs> was the wasp guy. I was thinking of. And Forlom was kind of waspy too, if, if memory serves, right? Yeah, a little bit. He was more mechanical, though. more machine than man. I think that's six. I think that was six. I don't know. It, it's six total. Yeah. But Boba Fett was already taken off the menu. Bye. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. And, and she she doesn't get. A I know. I don't. It's okay. Man. But we will give her another chance, as will all of our contestants when we come back from these words. Hi, everybody. Rich here. You know, one of the best things about Simply Syndicated is the great community of listeners we've got and all of the things you guys do to help us out. Something you could do that helps us spread the word about our shows is to let people know that you're listening on Facebook and Twitter. All our episodes have sharing buttons on them so you can tell your friends about us with just a few clicks of the mouse. Just visit our website at simplysyndicated.com and click the sharing buttons to help spread the word. And we're back. The scores as they stand. Guys, I hate, I hate to tell you this, but Matt's kicking all yo asses. Oh, no. Just by one point. <laughs> Matt's got four. Kevin's got three. Rose got two. And Omar's got one. It's like doing a countdown. The final countdown, some might say. Da, da. Only have one? Just one, my poor Omar. Just one. That can be only one. But we're up to Kevin in the batting order. Kevin, number 16 goes to you, sir. Mm. Before taking the role of Han Solo. Harrison Ford worked as a carpenter and stagehand for what Los Angeles Hello, I Love You band? Uh, the the Doors? The Doors! There you are. I did not know that. You are tied with Matt. I knew he was a carpenter, like, on the set of, like, George Lucas stuff, but did not know that that's what he did. The carpenter part is the, the part of the lore that's kind of widespread. Everyone knows that one, so I thought I'd try to throw you a curve. And you handled it, sir. You knocked it out of the park. Bless you, sir. Matt, number 17. What is the only location, the only one, in the original trilogy in which Darth Vader and C-3PO are seen in the same room together? Oh, I don't know about this one. Let me think for a second. Uh, Just one lonely spot. One lonely spot together. In all of the OT. Um, I'm thinking it's got to be on the Death Star, the first Death Star. Oh, oh. I wish you wouldn't have gone down that Ooh. corridor. Oh, yeah, it sounds like I'm wrong. All right, I give up. Where is it? Is it Omar? I Gio? think I hear Omar. P- is it with the, the with the Ewoks at the end? No, sorry, sir. Oh, is it uh, right it's at the it's beginning it's of the, the movie? No, it's the carbon freeze chamber, right? It is on Bespin. Yeah. The only place where they're together. Ah, C-3PO is yeah. not all in one piece, though. <laughs> now, Omar makes an interesting argument that they would have been together at the end of Episode Six, As But ghosts. at that point, he would have been <laughs> Anakin again. Yeah. Same thing. Yep. Technicality, sir. Because he, he was no longer a Sith. Mm-hmm. 18 goes to Omar. Omar, a chance to catch up. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is actually a tough one. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> you, you, you might pull it out, though. What six foot seven inch actor caught George Lucas's eye with his role as Julian, the bodyguard, in Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange? Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. T wasn't in Star Wars. He should have been. What six foot seven inch actor caught George Lucas's eye? With his role as Julie in the Bodyguard in Stanley Kubrick's like, Clockwork Orange. Um, and that's how he got his role in Star Wars. The dude that made the Harry and the Hendersons? Uh, not a bad guess. Uh, you're, you're talking about Kevin Michael Hall, the Predator. Yeah. But he wasn't in Star Wars either. Andre the Giant. <laughs> Andre, Andre the Giant would have been a very good Star Wars character. Does anyone know this? Nope. It's uh, yeah. Peter Mayhew. No. David Prowse. Nope. David, oh, David Prowse. Prowse, yes. The man inside the Darth Vader outfit. That's right. He has, like, really blonde hair in that uh, Clockwork Orange scene. Uh, I have not seen Clockwork Orange in probably 15 years. I don't remember it at all. He doesn't do anything except, like, after the after Alex has beaten up that one guy and he can't walk anymore, he, like, picks him up and carries him around. That's it. The clue there, though, was six foot seven inch. That's definitely the intimidating Darth Vader. And uh, it's interesting. I was reading a little bit about it. He says that he's shrunk by like four inches since then because he's, he's getting to be a, an older gentleman now. I actually met him like three weeks ago. He's not doing so great. He's going to horror movie conventions with like 300 people at him in the middle mm-hmm. of New Jersey. I hear that he always makes a big deal about saying that he's the real Darth Vader. Oh, yeah. They, they played the uh, Empire theme and had him march out on stage and he told a bunch of jokes and told stories about how he was, his voice was supposed to be the Darth Vader voice. Was his voice convincing in any way? No. 
No, definitely not. There's footage online. You can actually go to YouTube and see it. They had him record all the dialogue, and then they dubbed it in without him knowing about it. <laughs> yeah, he's got a pretty goofy northern accent. It's It doesn't sound the same. No. It's bad. Ro, we are up to number 19, and your question... Another movie question, a movie link okay. question, so I think you might do this one pretty well. The Empire Strikes Back was the highest grossing movie of 1980, earning $538 million domestic. What Dolly Parton film finished a distant second at the U.S. box office that year? Um, 9 to 5. There you are. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> also star- starring Lily Tomlin and Dabney mm-hmm. Coleman. Well and done. Jane Fonda? Yes. Uh, Kevin. Yes. Other than Luke... Obi-Wan, Han, Chewbacca, and the droids. Name three patrons of the Mos Eisley Cantina seen in A New Hope. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no, indeed. This is the tough one. Oh, no. Three? Seriously? Three. Oh, there's no way. Uh, Snaggletooth? There's no way, because I'm just going to put this out there. If you can't do it, I'll bet you Matt can. <laughs> I'll bet you he can't, which is a very embarrassing. Okay, Snaggletooth, he was there. <laughs> Uh, I, I need their names. No, Snaggletooth. That's what one of the guy's names. Matt, back we'll, me up here, Matt. He, he was we'll like look the, this up in the database. I, the I most. Don't think he turned out to be like, actually Snaggletooth. He turned out to be like the most valuable uh, figure because they got his like clo- clothes wrong or something like that. Okay, the list says his name is Tequil, oh. aka Snaggletooth Number One. <sighs> okay. Uh, okay. What, what were the guy's names who Obi Wan cut off his arm and? Uh, Good route to go. Lots of people know that one. Yeah, it's an Aqualish. Not this one. We uh, we this was a question before on the Atomic Trivia War, and I didn't know it then either. A panda, panda. There you go, panda Baba. Yeah. Uh, and then his doctor something friend who I take a stab at it. Doctor <laughs> Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> And Bobby Bartender, and uh, Jimmy Spacer, the, the Elephant Man, and uh, Hammerhead. Ha- does Hammerhead count? Hammerhead does not count. Come on, dude. Come oh. on. Um, no, I think I'm going to throw in the towel. Wow. Okay, uh, Matt, how many can you do? I, I throw in the mm-hmm. towel here. I, I think we should actually challenge Matt here, since we have an opportunity to see how many he can name. Those gr- uh, Greedo count? Three or more. Yeah, Greedo. Yeah, yeah, Greedo yeah. count. That would have been a good one. Uh, I'll see how many I could do. This this dips into the Star Wars card game knowledge where they, they named crappy characters. They got two frames of screen time. Oh, yeah. Mm. I had the CCG as well. So the hammerhead was Mamau Nadan. And uh, there was a pointy head devil guy. It was uh, Labria, I think. Yes. Uh, the doctor was Dr. Evazan. Indeed. Uh, we got we got Boshek, the Karelian smuggler. There you go. Wow. Which, by the way is how he won the interview process to be on the show tonight, folks. Give him a round of, apl- of applause. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, try to think of any others. I think I just got de-pantsed. Oh, we got the, uh, you, got, you got Figure and Dan and uh, Modal Nodes, the whole band back there. You sure do. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's it for me. Kevin mentioned the bartender, and I think that uh, there's too many to go in a name, but uh, since he did bring it up, it's Werher. Okay. Uh, W-U-H-R-E-R. Stupid names. <laughs> yes, I can concur with that, sir. But uh, good job, Matt. Uh, M- Matt answered Kevin's question, but it's Matt's turn again. Oh, okay. So we're back up to Matt. Uh, Matt, I keep on saying your name, Matt, because I'm trying to find my place on my list. <laughs> Here we go. Number 21, name the race of pig-like humanoids who assist with Han Solo's carbonite deep freeze on Cloud City. Oh man, I know this. I know this. I'm getting that. How can you know those like really tough ones and not know these like more basic ones? Uh, I'm getting the podcast freeze here. Oh, they're the Ugnots, the Unots. I don't know how to are. What's the proper pronunciation? I have no idea. I always go with Ugnots, but I have no idea either. One of them gets eaten, right, by the big dude mm-hmm. below Jawa's like place. Uh, no, you're thinking of Gamorian guards, sir. We're, oh. we're actually talking about uh, an empire in the middle. Mm. Or toward the end, rather. They're both delicious, though. <laughs> uh, tastes like ham, from what I know. Oops. Omar, back to you. Uh, you're, we're looking for your second point, Omar. Yes. <laughs> Des- I know I can do Desperately it. Desperately seeking. Which original trilogy cast member who called his dialogue bloody awful banal lines and mumbo jumbo was nominated for Best Actor or Actress at the 1977 Academy Awards? For his part in Star Wars? In Star Wars, mm-hmm. 
Even though, here's some extra clue while you think about it, even though he hated Star Wars and refused to do any promotion for the film at all. Hmm. So I'm pretty sure it's not Earl Jones because he did voiceover and he didn't act. Right, it wasn't James Earl Jones at all. It has to be one of the, maybe the one that they did, the, the Emperor. Hmm. Okay, okay. I'm going to say, nah, whoever did Obi-Wan, I don't know. That is the answer you are looking for. Yes. Alec Guinness. Ah, nice. Nice. I'll give it Two to points. you. <laughs> we will chalk that one up to Omar. Uh, yeah, apparently the word on the street is that he at one point ter- told um, George Lucas to, to go ahead and try saying the lines himself. Yeah. <laughs> Ro, mm-hmm. Clive Revel played the voice of Emperor Palpatine in The Empire Strikes Back and the voice of what Batman the Animated Series regular? Ooh. These, these questions are just falling to the right people, with, with the exception of Omar. <laughs> okay, wait. Repeat that. He was the voice of Emerald, uh, Emerald uh, Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> Bam! <in> Empire <laughs> Clive Revel provided the voice for Emperor Palpatine in The Empire Strikes Back and the voice of what Batman the Animated Series regular? Well, it definitely wasn't the Joker. No, that was Mark Hamill. It was Luke. <laughs> um, was that your impersonation of the voice he was doing in Batman or the voice impersonation of the Emperor voice? I was trying to do uh, the Joker in <laughs> that Batman. That was the Joker voice. Tower. There was a uh, little bit of that in there. I liked it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a regular. Hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think it's going to be a villain of sorts, so I'm going to go with the Penguin. No, no. Is it Commissioner Gordon? Alfred? <laughs> There you go. Alfred Pennyworth. <laughs> There's a point for Roe. Yeah. Wow. What? <laughs> well, she took three swings and got it on the last one, so it's kind of like baseball. <laughs> Pity the sick girl. Number 24 goes over to Kevin. <laughs> okay. According to the Lucas, many elements of a new hope, including a princess in peril, a rogue samurai who disrespects and rescues her, and bumbling servants, were inspired by what Japanese film by Akira Kurosawa? Is that the Hidden Fortress? That is the correct answer. There you go. You're maintaining your tie with Matt. Uh, okay. I thought he was one ahead of me, but okay. We're, we're five, two, four, five in that order. Matt, Omar, Roe, Kevin. Now, we didn't give him a point for getting the correct answer to your question what, last time. Did right? Matt right, right. miss any of the questions? Yeah, I think I, Matt's I, I 100%. Missed one. Okay. Oh, you, okay. All right. Uh, number 25 goes to Matt. What desert dweller? Did old Ben imitate in the Dune Sea to scare sand people away from Luke? There was an actual... Oh, it was a, a crate dragon. There you are. There's your sixth the point. I thought, it was a, I thought you were asking for a person's <laughs> name. No, he was imitating the call of the crate dragon. I like to pretend it's a mating call. How do you know that? Like, where uh, does that come from? Not having a life from age 12 to 14. <laughs> <laughs> That's that big skeleton that you see at the beginning where C-3PO's walking past it. Number 26 goes to Omar. What rebel briefs pilots on the first Death Star's thermal exhaust port weakness, saying, Many Bothans died to bring us this information. Porkins. (laughs) Oh, sorry, it wasn't Porkins. Uh, I have no idea, dude. Her name was Mon Mothma. Good for her. (laughs) She can die in a fire. Whoops. 27 row. Mm Mm-hmm. What is the name of the Biff Band that performs in the Moss Eisley Cantina? Oh my God, Matt said it earlier. She wasn't. Mm. She wasn't on. She was. She was out. <laughs> Damn it! Oh, well, um, yeah, I don't. What know. is the name of those penis-like shrimps <laughs> who play the weirdo instruments <laughs> in the bar? <laughs> yeah, they did have penis heads. You know, that's that's one of those weird things where sometimes I'll start to whistle and. There's two songs that like I'll subconsciously start. It's either the Cantina scene song, or uh, if I only had a brain from from the Wizard of Oz. Um, I don't know the singing penises or the. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to use your phone, a friend? I'm not gonna get the point, but sure. <laughs> Who are you gonna call? Matt. <laughs> Matt. Oh, I don't remember anymore. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, Figurin Dan and the Modal Nodes. That's that's the band. God damn. Kevin. Yes, sir. Time to play catch up. What kind of recreational sporting equipment was used to generate the sound of Darth Vader's breathing apparatus? Man, I really don't know this, but I'm going to go with, like, <sighs> scuba gear? A scuba regulator. There you are. There's your point. Nice. Okay, so number 29 goes to Matt. Matt, this is the penultimate question of the evening. Uh, you have a chance here to pull ahead 
and destroy Kevin. All right, I'm going to put the blast <laughs> shield down. Uh, arm your pho- photon torpedoes. Wait, is that Star Trek? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Every Star Wars movie has been released in the U.S. in what month? And always a week after George Lucas's birthday. Uh, I believe it's the month of May. That is correct. You win the game. Wow. Nice. There is one question left, though, and it goes to Omar. And possibly one of the tougher ones. So good luck, Omar. Thank you. At the end of A New Hope, the Millennium Falcon and two X-Wings escape the Death Star explosion. What other craft is the only other one shown escaping as the Death Star is destroyed? A TIE oh. bomber. Dar- Darth Vader's uh, craft. Is it an advanced? TIE advanced? Defender? It's the only other one shown escaping as the Death Star is destroyed. Well, Darth Vader's ship, no? Nope. Sorry, that one is uh, that one is thrown off into the, the nether void earlier. Oh, I have no idea. An A-wing. Oh, if you had only said a Y-wing, that is the other one. But as the uh, scores stand here, Matt, seven points. Seven. Mm. Seven points out nice. of 30. That is the clear plurality. Omar with two, Roe with four, Kevin with six. Nice job, Kevin. You almost uh, almost beat our I had to get one more question than him. I can't believe <laughs> both of you have children. <laughs> <laughs> Next week we're going to have an old-style show. And, uh, uh, you know, the regular hot seat rank and file kind of game. Because I've been going through my email and processing the, I don't know, like 60 or so categories <laughs> that have been submitted by our awesome listeners. Uh, also, next week, Roe is going to be gone to some Pix Pox thing? Pox? Pox. Is that how it's said? Pix Pox? Pox? What? P- Pax. P- Pax. No, I'm, no, that's not it. Yeah, that's <laughs> going to be there, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so, Roe's not going to be with us. We're going to do a regular show. We'll have some sort of a guest to sit in on that seat. I don't get to be at the cool, like, are you smarter than the eighth grader podcast recording? No, see, we're going to have an old style show next week. That's the one you're going to miss. Okay. Right. The one after is going to be the are you smarter than than a grade school one. So, listeners, send your questions. They can be regular categories that you might send anytime. Or don't. Uh, geeky questions <laughs> to ATW9K at simplysyndicated.com. Or if you want to send the grade school episode questions to us, send it to the same address. Uh, just make sure that you mark it, are you smarter than a grade schooler? And that will m- help me put it into a special folder in my email. Nice. Uh, so go ahead and do that. No questions that require us to do math. Remember that. That's very, very important. No, that was only for Andrew. Were we having Andrew on the show? <laughs> <laughs> I really don't feel like sitting here and, and adding things up or doing square roots or anything or, or doing polynomial equations on the show. That that would be bad. Bad. But I'd be open to things like, uh, what do you call a triangle with two equal sides in which the interior angles of the opposite sides are also equal? Isosceles. You know. There you go. Uh, so submit those. Even if you've never submitted before, don't be shy. We have a couple more quick things to talk about. Row. Mm-hmm. Who was our Photo Friday winner? Um, our Photo Friday winner is Mike Robertson of the Top 5 Podcast. So, yeah, Woo. you win the um, March Madness mascots. He's from Riverside, California. But, you know, I also want to give a special shout-out to our friend Liddy, who was on the show before. She finally submitted some answers to it. So, it's like, yay. Wait, wait, wait you're saying that someone who listens to our show knows sports? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, I contest this. Well, Scott Rubin knows football. <laughs> I like football, too, but it's, uh, it's, it's one of those weird things. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, drop by simplysyndicated.com and join the fun. Talk with other geeks. Click the Donate button if you like our shows and want to help us pay for, you know, like the ability to give you shows by having servers and stuff, because that's always good. If you don't like us, donate as well. <laughs> yes. Uh, if we reach $1,000, we'll kick Omar off the show. <laughs> <laughs> for just one episode. Uh, spread the word about Atomic Trivia War 9000 to your friends. We love that stuff. Let's end the show with a few more quick trivia tidbits. I understand that our guests have brought some things to share. Show and tell. Ooh, my, my, mine has a lot of show. This has a lot of show? Oh, Omar, I think you got to go first. Did you know that there's a booby in one of the <laughs> Star Wars movies? <laughs> you clearly see a booby in one of the movies. Can you guess what scene and what character? Oh, isn't it like the nasty booby of the, the hut lady? Of the hut woman? The the big dancing one in Jedi? No. It's not, the is, it in the, in the, is it her yes. movie? It's Ula the Twi'lek. When she's about to fall. Okay, that was your random tri- out of her outfit. Okay, that was your random trivia, but you couldn't guess the race of that on one of the questions I was asked to you. <laughs> That's why, why, why I said, hey, I know I remember her name. I don't remember her race. 
Oh no! <laughs> oh yes. Here, I'll link. You, I'll link you the, the the YouTube, so you can see it yourselves. <laughs> oh god! It has Great. like special effects and shit. Oh boy! At around a minute and twenty three. <laughs> I'll check that in a bit. And no wait. Okay. A minute and twenty. All right. I'll- let me give my let me give my uh, my Star Wars trivia here, okay? And and even the biggest Star Wars geeks might not know this Star Wars trivia. Okay, ready for this? Neither Han Solo nor Chewbacca wore blue jeans. Now, back when blue jeans got started, they got their signature fabric from a French town called Nîmes. That's in France, and the French words for from Nîmes is literally de Nîmes, denim. See that denim, which Chewbacca never wore. So that's your Star Wars trivia of the day. That's amazing. I never would have guessed that he never wore Deneen. I know. There you go. Now, see, I didn't think Ro was going to be on here. So in her honor, I picked more trivia about boobs. So <laughs> Yes! <laughs> my kind of man, Matt. Now, why have one Java dancer boob when, if you'll get the other dancer, she actually has not one, not two, but six boobs. And not many people know that. So that is the trivia. It is a special race called the Askegeon, if I'm pronouncing that even remotely correctly. And they actually have their <laughs> own entire planet filled with husky, six-boobed women. So my challenge to the creators of Star Wars The Old Republic is I will play your MMO if I can create a character that can surround himself with husky, six-boobed women. But <laughs> until then, no dice. Okay, um, my fact, it's, um, it's nothing much, but... Filming of the Empire Strikes Back it had to halt for two weeks due to a windsurfing competition in Australia that became an annual tradition of sorts for Lucas, and he refused to miss it. So they stopped for two weeks filming just so he can go to the windsurfing competition. Good Wikipedia reading, row. No. <laughs> it wasn't Wikipedia, I can tell you that one. <laughs> all right well thanks to all of our contestants tonight thanks to our regulars bro omar kevin and thanks to our special guests tonight matt matt where can people read more about your stuff uh you can go on to uh geek newsmtvcom and look for the hobby gaming column uh, that's all me you can also go to wired.com slash geek dad where i write about uh, some geeky parenting things and also do some you know non-board gaming blogging Wait, 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 wait! You're a nerd? Oh, very much. I wouldn't have guessed it. <laughs> a million years, dude. You know, when I stopped reading trashy Star Wars books, I just started playing, you know, super complicated German board games instead. Well, thank you, Matt, for being here. We will see everyone else. Oh, thank you. Next week. Later. May the force be with you. And also with you. Nerds.